Everyone wants Copics. Get Copics, they say. They are the best, they say. I know, I say, but they are so expensive. Especially when you're just starting out. So many artists try their luck with cheaper markers instead. So am I. Yep, I'm cheap. Hey guys, this is the Saigami Project and my name is Andrea Otilia Vörös, aka Sunny. I'm the creator of the manga series Saigami, published and serialized in Saturday AM, the bi-weekly digital manga anthology featuring creators from all around the globe. So I'm gonna be giving you 10 tips on how to improve uh, your artworks, even with cheap markers, how to create good looking artwork with cheap markers. I'm gonna give you 10 tips, uh, but since this video became really really long, like it's almost 40 minutes, I decided to do it in two parts, so I'm gonna give you five tips in the first part and the five other tips in the second part. I will upload both videos at the same time, so if you want to watch it together, you can, but I figured watching a 40 minute video in one go could be a bit overwhelming, so that's why I decided to make it a two-parter. Like I said, I'm one of those artists who prefers to find cheaper art supplies. Even when you figure out by doing the math that all that money you spent on cheap alternatives could have gotten you a copy starter set. But, 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 really, I should have gotten a copy. No, no, cheap is fine. Yeah, really. Because I know very well, it's a huge pressure on our wallets to get a decent amount of markers, especially if you live in a country where they are not just harder to find, but likely more expensive than they are in the US or any other big countries. Like for example, in the city where I used to live, we only had one art supply store. They occasionally had a few copics, totally random colors, like they were all useless. And, you know, the amount of markers were like, you know, they had like five or eight. And the price was easily the double of the normal price. So yeah, sometimes you have to find cheaper alternatives. And in the end, you can figure out that they are not even that bad. So in this video, I will be giving you tips based on my experience that can help you create good looking artworks, even with the cheap markers. In the footage you see I'm coloring an artwork by using only cheap markers. Yeah, I have a bunch of them now. I mean, not a huge, huge set, but I have like five or six, I, I don't know, different brands of cheap markers. So it's a really of a patchwork of a collection. But hey, it works, right? They say if it works, it ain't stupid or something like that. I really need to get back into memes. Yeah, I miss memes. Well, anyway, tip number one, the paper. Although going for the cheaper markers can be just as fine as more expensive brands, when it comes to the paper, it's better to be a bit more selective. Copy paper won't do much good. So it's for the best if you can get paper that will help you utilizing your cheap markers. There are many brands of uh, marker papers now, you can select from really a bunch of brands. You don't necessarily have to go for the Copic marker paper because that can be just as expensive as their markers and they're not necessarily the best. Marker papers have special coating that will mostly prevent your markers from bleeding or not, but at least they will make blending a tad easier or not. Really, you have to experience with them. I mean, there are marker papers that are good and there are some that are basically as shitty as copy paper, so good luck. <laughs> you can always find reviews on the internet, but you don't even necessarily have to go for marker papers um, because apart from the mixed media papers or comic paper worked well for me. So it's worth experimenting. For example, I actually really prefer to use my deleter paper uh, for the marker artworks because they work just as fine as marker paper and uh, the deleter paper is good with my inks. So it's a win-win situation, I guess. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that you don't want to use paper that will suck up your markers. For example, watercolor paper 
or very thick paper because you will see that your markers will run dry after one or a few artworks so be very very careful with that second tip blending blending is not a tip it's about the tip is about blending yeah yeah so secondly we're talking about blending some of the cheap markers won't blend at all even when you are giving it your all it just won't won't blend nope especially when you go for those super 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 cheap markers like uh, for example the touch five mic markers i made a review about them and they don't blend at all um some markers however will blend uh like for example uh, the artist love markers i also have a review about them and so yeah those markers blend pretty nicely so when you're going for cheap markers first of all you have to experiment with them and see if they can blend or not and how can you blend them um, copics are really good when it comes to blending but then again you have to learn the basics of blending because you know even if you have copics if you don't know how to do it you won't be able to blend like i remember at an art contest i saw a girl who had this huge set of copics and she was using them like crayons like really i i could cry seeing that artwork like so owning copics is not necessarily making you any good if you don't know how to use them but if you know how to use your markers the cheap ones can do justice for you just as fine so first of all test your markers and different papers see if they blend how can you blend them and even if you happen to own a set of markers that won't blend nicely you can still improvise like you don't necessarily have to do your artworks with very smooth gradient effects maybe if you have markers that aren't blending you can just settle for a, a sort of cel shaded look or harder edges there are many artists who don't do all the gradient blending and their artworks are looking really sharp and they are looking really good with those hard edges and cel shaded effects so first of all figure out how you can blend your markers and then you kind of have to work your way around it like you basically have to come up with your own style of using your markers if you are like me uh, owning different brands of markers um, you can utilize those to your advantages as well for example i have markers that are blending well there are markers that are blending a little bit and there are markers that aren't blending at all so usually when it comes to doing my artworks i'm kind of mixturing mixing mixing yeah i'm mixing things so some parts of the drawing will have smooth gradients uh with blending mostly i I tend to focus on that on the skin but at some places i use harder edges or i straight up go for a sort of cel shaded look and in the end they can look pretty neat so once again it's all up to your own style and experimenting but always uh try your various uh colors and uh, blending methods on a separate piece of paper especially when you are working on the line art uh, you did with ink so if you're not making any copies of it be sure to experiment first on a separate piece of paper and make sure that paper is the same type of paper you are working on because it's no point of working on a marker paper and testing your blending techniques out on a different type of paper only to see that things will work differently on different papers tip number three learn to use the colorless blender the colorless blender is actually the biggest lie of all like everyone thinks it's some magical marker that will do all of that smooth gradient magically in your artwork blending even the colors that are not blendable at all but nope 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 <laughs> it's kind of like the marker is named wrong i mean yeah it's colorless yeah you can use it to blend some stuff and it's not necessarily what you would expect 
I remember when I first got one, I got all excited thinking, woohoo, now I will be able to magically have all the smooth gradients in my artworks. Who needs copies? Just give me a cheap blender and I will be able to blend even the colors that are not blendable. Mohaha. Yeah, but that, that, that <laughs> I was so wrong. Uh, yeah, that's not how it works. So don't have false expectations. But if you spend some time with it, learn how to use it, what a colorless blender is capable of, then yeah, it's a pretty nifty tool. It can be very, very practical. So the colorless blender is basically a clear marker that only has clear alcohol in it. And it will basically uh, remove ink from the paper. So you can lift ink with it. Uh, it's very, very practical when you color out of your lines because with it you can go over the the marker spots outside of your line art and eventually you will be able to remove it. Maybe not everything. For example, if it's a very dark color, it will be harder to lift off the pigments, but with lighter colors it will work just fine. And at the same time, uh, if you go over uh, colors, if the color is still wet, you can smooth it out. For example, if it's a, a lighter a yellow or lighter blue or any sort of lighter saturation, uh, you can smooth it into completely white, so to the paper. Uh, actually, I kind of find the colorless blender pretty similar to how you can use clear water when you work with watercolors. For example, one uh, good blending technique that's the same in watercolor and in uh, markers. When you first use uh, just clear water, or in this case, your colorless blender, and you start coloring over the wet uh, surface, that will help you smoothen and uh, things and make a more gradient effect. So yeah, when when you have a colorless blender, first you have to experiment and see what it can do because, yeah, it. It won't help you to blend huge gaps. For example, a very, very light blue and a very dark blue just won't be blend because you use the colorless blender because that's not how it works. Um, but it will be a pretty useful tool. Tip number four, choose your ink carefully. Usually you do an, a line art with ink first, but if not, then you can basically skip this part Kind of. I mean, I know there are people who color over uh, their pencil artworks. I'm the type who prefers to do it with line art, especially since my sketches aren't clean at all. So yeah, let's just consider that you are doing uh, line art with ink. Some inks won't work with markers at all. Like they will smear and they will ruin your markers, they will ruin your paper, they will ruin your artwork, your day, your whole life. Not so dramatic, but yeah. So. You really have to pick your ink carefully. So once again, grab a piece of paper, a paper you're gonna be working on, put down uh, lines uh, with ink, with various ink if you're uh, wanting to use more uh, inking materials. For example, I like to use uh, traditional uh, nib pens, like a G pen. I like to use uh, fine liners, that, like the Sakura Micron pens. And I also like to use brush pens. So first of all, put down a few scratch of lines, let them dry. It's very, very, very important to let your line art dry, like give it time because if the ink is wet, it will smear even if it would be marker proof. The same goes when you are doing watercolor, but uh, when it comes to markers, I would give it even more drying time because the alcohol can be somewhat more aggressive than water. Huh. And that be one of the biggest truths in the life. Alcohol is more aggressive than water. Don't drink, really. Don't drink it. It's not good for you. It's not good for anyone. Just drink water. Just stick with water. Water is good. Water is life. At any rate, when your ink is dry, you can go over with your markers, uh, preferably with a lighter color, because that will allow you to see if the ink is smearing or not. Uh, preferably go over in a few layers to see if your ink will be able to handle multiple layers of color. And if it's not smearing or smudging at all, then you're good. But if it does, yeah, that sucks. I know, I mean, the artwork I'm doing here, this is actually the second version you can see. Uh, 
because first I used uh, my Penta brush pen, which is one of my favorites when it comes to creating line art. And I was stupid enough not to test it with the new markers I was experimenting with here in this video. So yeah, it totally ruined my artwork. Luckily, I had a scanned version of the artwork before, so I could print it out. Again, so what I'm coloring here is actually not an actual ink line art, but a printer ink line art. But hey, it worked. Yeah, so it's very important to test your inks first. Otherwise, you will be giving yourself a hard time and that's something you don't want. And this actually kind of led to my fifth tip. Uh, always, always, always make safety copies. Like, just in my case, I completely ruined my original line art, but that I was saved because I already did a scan version of the line art before starting coloring, so I could do multiple printouts and test on different papers and whatnot if I want. So I always recommend uh, to do a safety copy of your line art before you jump in with the coloring, especially since many times the cheaper markers are not so cooperative, like they will bleed, they won't do the things you want, especially with the very, very, very cheap ones. So it will put your mind at a certain ease that you have a backup plan. I know you still most likely will have to start over again, but um, for me, it always eases my mind to know that even if I screw up, which happens kind of often, like, you know, <laughs> no one's perfect, mistakes are happening. Of course, sometimes those accidents can be happy accidents, and sometimes you can cover up them to look like birds, but sometimes that's not working. So if you have safety copies, at least you know that your, won that your work won't be ruined for good. So it also has alleviating the stress. Like I remember many times when I'm working on an original line art, I'm like, oh, please don't let me mess this up because then I will have to start over and that will be so much of a work. So yeah, yeah. It it can really help if you do safety copies. You can even experiment uh, on your safety copies to see what sort of color combinations are working, uh, especially when you are doing an artwork and you still don't know what sort of color palette you're wanting to use or what colors will work. So experimenting like that is also really good. And like I said, it will help you be basically fail proof would be sort of an exaggeration to say, but you will have backup plans, and that's always a good thing to have. So make safety copies. This is the end of the first part, the first five tip. You can jump right ahead to the next five tips in the next video. Here's the link for it. Or you can check out all of my social media sites, Saturday AM, my store MV store. And I do have now a Patreon. I'm going to explain that in the end of the next video. And volume two of Saigami is now available worldwide, so you can check out that as well. All of the links down below in the description. Thank you very much for watching this and see you in the next video.